someone like Masoud Pesashkian, who is a non-cleric, who cannot be a supreme leader, his sudden emergence as president raises the question, why him, why now? And I frankly think it's too early to judge, but I think one thing we have to assume has happened, and that is the top echelons of power in the Islamic Republic, the office of the supreme leader, and the generals in the Revolutionary Guards, who really called the shots on some of the key issues in Iran, they had a good sense of Iranian society and decided that this is a very angry population. We need to do something. We need to create political space. Otherwise, we're going to end up with more street protests and so forth. Someone like Pezeshkian can play the role of maybe diffusing the situation, at least in the short term. And I think that is probably the reason why he was allowed to run and he was allowed to win. As a candidate, he has spoken the language of change, and that is the appeal. I mean, he got about 16 million votes in a country where essentially, particularly the younger demographic, have long time ago decided elections in Iran don't matter. Decisions are made by people who are not in elected office, but are made by people like the Supreme Leader and the Revolutionary Guards. So why vote? But he managed to get 16 million votes. We, we have to assume most of that is is. A real figure is not made up figure by by the regime. So why would 16 million people vote for Pezeshkian? Because of his promise of change. But can he deliver on change that the Iranians want? Can he, for example, come in and um, you know push back on some of those draconian laws that exist in the country? Things like mandatory veil, the hijab. Uh, you know some of these religious dictated positions of the regime. He cannot, and he has made it very clear that. He will hope he can engage the rest of the regime in a dialogue. But one thing Pesishkian has done, maybe cleverly, uh, uh, is to say from the beginning of him entering this race that he will stay within the frameworks as they are set by the supreme leader. He knows we know he's always going to play second fiddle to the supreme leader. Um, but this is the big question, the million dollar question. What does the rest of the regime, including Khamenei and the Revolutionary Guards, think right now this country needs to do in terms of change, changes domestic foreign to maintain political stability at a time where you have an 85 year old supreme leader who might leave the stage and you don't want a crisis on your hands during that transition period? یا سلطگری بر دیگران وجود ندارد اما حفظ آمادگی This idea that you can just sort of put a wall around the country and ignore the rest of the world it doesn't work out in practice that was Pesishkian's message it's a message that goes down really well in Iranian society that's dealing with the economic impact of sanctions but Pesishkian has also said throughout that he's not going to be able to um, do anything that different on key strategic issues, on those big issues like what to do with the United States, what's Iran's position on Israel, what is Iran's position on, on, on the nuclear program, its missile program, its regional uh, actions. He has made it clear that those go will be outside his purview. Uh, now, again, can he engage the rest of the regime? by presenting them with hard data and facts and say, look, we need to change course. Otherwise, this regime's survival will be at stake. That's going to be the big challenge of Pezeshkian. Look, the United States is the big elephant in the room in anything major that happens in Iran. So, yes, who sits in the White House is something that they care about deeply. Um, there are many Iranian commentators, as we speak right now, who are speculating the reason why Pezeshkian was allowed to run, allowed to win, is because uh, the Iranian regime wants to set the stage in the next five months, while you still have a Biden presidency, or to the end of this year, to sort of at least move things forward, because nothing major has happened on the nuclear front for some time. And if there is a second Biden term or another Democrat or even a Trump presidency, if you have actually started moving things forward, by January of next year, 2025, maybe you can resume. Because again, the, the 2015 nuclear deal expires in October of next year. 
So you don't have that much time. And the, the Iranians are not interested in eternal sanctions being put on them. So they need to figure a way out if they want to have these sanctions lifted. <laughs> If you listen to countries like Saudi Arabia, United Arab Emirates, their big complaint over the decades has always been, we prefer the reformist candidates when they are in power. We prefer a Mohammed Khatami, we prefer a Hassan Rouhani, we prefer a Masoud Pezeshkian. Their problem isn't that the reformists aren't likable, it's that they can't deliver. That's always been the issue for the regional neighbors of Iran, that the real you know, concerns that they have. What is Iran doing in the region? That is not a policy that's set at the presidential palace in Tehran. That's a policy dictated by the revolutionary guards with the support of the supreme leader. So they liked Raisi, not because Raisi was a nicer man to deal with, but because they felt he could deliver. If Raisi said something, he could deliver. The big test will now be, can Pezeshkian deliver? Because smiles and handshakes is not going to be enough for some of these states. راستشو بخیر فقط امیدوارم که یه خورده گرونی‌ها پایین‌تر بیاد، کار برای جوان‌ها راحت‌تر پیدا بشه. همین دیگه خیلی حس خاصی ندارم. فقط خیلی خوشحالم که آقای پزشکیان شده. اینکه واقعا قیمت ها ثابت بمونه و اینکه دختر و جوون ها راحت تو خیابون ها راه میرن استرس این رو نداشته باشن که بخوان الان چه میدان خدای نکرده کسی بهشون گیر بده اینجور داستان ها پیش نیاد من حسم فعلا مثبت به شرط این که قولایی که داده برنامهاتی گفته رو اجرا بکنه و ایشالله که اجرا بکنه با آقای پزشکیان احتمال زیاده که تحریم ها لغو بشه و خیلی به نفع ملته